Good afternoon. You guys all wake up. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we'll take the first section so to introduce you guys some uh, tools to develop the web app. So, uh, in the morning, uh, John already tells you uh, what is HTML, what's HTML5, and uh, Tim and Christopher give you some examples about how to use CSS3. And um, here in this section, I will focus in on tools. So, um, so for example, I, I assume that we are all beginners here. Uh, I, I don't want to tie that HTML tag, uh, head tag, title tag, body tag, and then close the tag every time I create a project, but that would take me quite some time. And um, uh, Christopher also uh, introduced a lot of uh, CSS features, but I don't know maybe a thousand new features there. I mean, people will remember. Uh, I mean, I need to look up, look up a book every time, or just search on the internet. That would take me so many times. I, I want to do it fast. I want to start my project fast. I want to create it fast, and I want to see uh, what HTML API I can use. So uh, next time, uh, good tools will really help you uh, save time. So in this section, I will uh, focus in a few. Uh, for example, I will talk about IDE first. IDE is an uh, inter integrated development environment. So this is the tools that help you write your code fast, uh, text your code fast, uh, compile your code. Just put all these tools together to, to make you more productive. And then we will talk about some shared tools. Shared tools is that, I, uh, for example, I have ideas. I write some codes. I want to share to you. I want to share to a friend. Ask them, how do you think about my code? Or I have a bug. I don't know how to, how to work it out. I want to share to my, uh, send to my colleague. Say that, hey, how, how do I solve this problem? So I need some shared tools. Or we, we, um, sometimes we uh, create a project uh, like a team. And the team member maybe is not really in one office or not in one city or not even in one country. We need a tools to collaborate. We need a tools to write code together between uh, our colleagues who maybe disagree from different places. And, and as we'll talk about some debug tools that build uh, building in the browser, so a web browser or a Firefox. Uh, those tools could help you debug your codes, find where the problem is, or uh, help you to see, look inside uh, your project. So we will talk about IDE first. So, what would you expect an IDE would give you? But code highlight. The, uh, I guess this morning you already saw that uh, the HTML code in the plain text uh, editor. Uh, when you save it as a .html file, you can see some highlight effects so that you could distinguish these different text or contents, see it more clearly or beautifully. <laughs> and uh, there's also, uh, also a new feature called the Smart Code Hint. Uh, I will demonstrate this uh, later. This, would say, uh, this is really the uh, tools to save your time. So when you type, for example, there's some JavaScript method that is just too long. The method, the function that is too long. I don't want to type it every time. So this time, uh, a smart code hint could help you uh, save a lot of time. And then find and replace. Uh, these are simple things. I can replace uh, the uh, different place in my, in my code. And snip and template, this is the uh, really with really helpful features. Uh, just, what, just like what I said, I want to start up an HTML file uh, project, but I don't want to write those codes every, line by line every time. I want to start up a project with a template I uh, present, so that just one click, and then I have all my project skeleton. I just fill in the things that I need. And Live Browser Reload is another very important feature. Uh, you, you just saw in this morning, uh, for example, Christopher has uh, create, uh, write some CSS code, and then you need to go to the browser, refresh it, see, oh yes, that's my effect, and then go back to my code, add more, uh, go back to my editor, add more codes, and then go back to the browser, try to refresh it, but well, it's boring, right? So, live browser below is a tool that helps you when, whenever you save your project, for example, I, I uh, modify the CSS file, save it, and then the browser will get automatically refreshed. 
so that you don't need to do that yourself. And optimize an image is uh, some advanced uh, technique uh, I'll show you later. So the first idea I want to show you is called WebStorm. WebStorm is, um, as the title said, the smartest JavaScript IDE, and in fact it is. Uh, it can promote you a lot of these, uh, for, for example, these core highlights. Uh, let, let me sh just show you the, the uh, editor. WebStorm. It's basically the Eclipse for JavaScript. So we can open a directory. I already set up a project here. So, for example, I want to create a uh, HTML file. For example, I name it the uh, about. And as you can see, I have several different templates that uh, I'm going to choose. Oh, where's the HTML5? It's just HTML. HTML, okay. Now, you have your HTML basic file. You have a dot type, you have HTML, you have a head, you have a title, you have a body, everything is already there. You don't need to write it line by line. All you need to do is just add a title. This is about page. That's it. You don't need to write the other common parts that you write every day. And the, the Another feature I want to demonstrate is the call hint. As you can see, the, the, uh, the document, I'm not sure you, you understand what the document is. The document uh, object reference to the HTML page or the, or the, the, the uh, page object itself. So, um, I want to say I want to carry an object. For example, I want to find the body. So, you can say here, yeah. as I type, it would uh, automatically hint me that this document and what methods are done there. Uh, for example, I want to add an event handler so that when a user click on the page, uh, I, can, I can listen to the event and do something. But the event listener is really a long name, so here we have it. You just type it, say click, and then a function. That's it. But uh, this ID, although it packs a lot of features, but it has a lot of disadvantage. When your project grows bigger, you write, for example, a few thousand lines of JavaScript code, it will uh, become slower because actually it will pass your JavaScript trying to find out what object is that, uh, what property it has, what attribute it has, what function it has. So this process itself consumes a lot of CPU and memory. So if, you pro if your project grows a lot bigger, and it will take more time to the parser to understand your JavaScript. Uh, although it still provides very good uh, code hinting, but it would consume a lot of memory. And, and as you uh, write more and more projects, you will become more advanced. You think, hey, this thing is slow. I, I don't need it anymore. I just want a simple browser, but I still, of course, I still want the code hint because it's really convenient. And um, what am I going to do? Well, there's another choice called the sublink text. Sublink text is uh, basically something like the, the text editor you saw this morning with some extra features. Uh, for example, you can see that this is a called a mini map on the lab. You can navigate through your project really, really fast and find your uh, code uh, faster if your project is grow growing long. And um, there's a lot of uh, features. You can take a look at this one. I'm going to open this project. So there's a, uh, for example, we are going to edit this file, but the code hint 
this editor tool is not real because if you see a, a, a typing document that no hint at all because it simply said, uh, finds what words is in my JavaScript and then will hint me, uh, will, will promote me that uh, you, you just type that. Do you mean you want to type it again? For example, we uh, say get element by ID test. Oops. And then when you try again, you see uh, that uh, it recognizes the document. You just enter, and then you recognize that you previously entered this method. Actually, it only finds words in your editor. But this way is much faster because it doesn't understand your code. Actually, if I try something else, uh, I, type, I type a word that doesn't exist, does not exist and try to get element, it still gives me the uh, member but actually this one doesn't exist but the uh, advantage of this uh, editor is that it responds really fast and no matter how big your project grows, it still performs well and I just love this meaning that you can navigate your code really fast and see a snapshot on here so that you can maybe locate your code uh, a little bit faster it will take you so much time to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down and I talk about collaborations and uh, sharing just now and uh, Cloud Knight is such an ID that allows you to create your project right on top of a web browser you don't need to download it, you don't need to install it it's running on the browser, on the cloud and the best part of Cloud Knight is that I can share the project to multiple uh, developers. We can edit the code together, we can share code together, because we can even see each other typing in text together. It's just like the Google document for uh, our JavaScript developers. So we can take a look at it in action. Oops. Slow connection. Who's watching YouTube? <laughs> so I'm gonna sign in. Don't watch my password. You can see that this is a really familiar user interface. You could create new file over here. Oh, that's funny. For example, I'm creating an index.html here. As you can see, everything I do is right on the browser. You can uh, edit code just like you do on the, uh, on the test editor on your system, and you could even preview your project, just like uh, what you saw this morning. Oh, oh sorry, I haven't saved my project. Try to refresh it. There it is. So, 
You, you don't need to download anything. You can do it right on your browser. And it also comes with the cohint feature. I'm going to create a uh, JavaScript file. Yeah, yeah. It tells me that there is an object called document. And what method can I have? Can I uh, say add event listener? Or maybe body. Document body. And I want to. And also the format, it automatically insert a tab here for me. So make the code uh, much beautiful. And I'm gonna alert. Hello. Save it. And add this script to my HTML. And then I'm gonna refresh this page. What's the problem? No error. Oh, what oh, is no. Sorry, this is not a standard way to access body. Now we have it. Saying hello. So everything you could expect on a local uh, code editor, you could find that on Cloud9. And you can, you're welcome to try the uh, collaboration features uh, on the hands-on lab uh, section later. <coughs> and oh, there is another feature about, about something text that I forgot to talk about. It's the snip and template. You can actually add the uh, uh, a template yourself. For example, I want to add this line. I don't want to write it every time. I want to access it just by one click. What do I do? Uh, here in the tools, we say new snip. And then we are typing the code that we want to write. For example, document. Document get element by ID. And then and then arrive up here and add a trigger. Say we want to do this assembly typing dock. And only available in the JavaScript file. But uh, remember that you need to use the Sublime Snip uh, extension name so that uh, the ID can recognize that this is an extension. So I'm going to do this again. Doc. There it is, our function, uh, our, our code. Just one click and then you're good to go. And you can add any snip you like. Uh, no matter how long the code is, you just Simply write the code you, you want, uh, replace some reliable inside with this. Uh, with this uh, dollar and then some numbers uh, telling the ID which parameter you have, one, two, three, four, five, you, you name it, never mind. And so these are editors that you use to write your code. But what about, uh, I want some other tools. For example, um, I have some libraries. JavaScript has a lot and lots of open source library on the web that just, uh, they, they work a lot of functionality inside so that you don't need to implement it uh, again. And sometimes I, for, for example, I have 10 projects. And I also, I, I, both of them, I want to use a library, for example, for jQuery. Uh, I'm not sure you, you guys know about jQuery. Uh, okay. uh, 
Put your hand up if you know about jQuery. Okay, one. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, jQuery is a library that um, contains a lot, lots and lots of features so for for job, for JavaScript. Uh, it hide the uh, actually. Um, if you want to implement a project uh, that cross browser, for example, IE, uh, Firefox, Chrome, uh, so the, uh, the API provided by JavaScript is slightly different. So you need to do uh, if this is an IE, I call this function. If this is a, a Firefox, I call this function. If this is a WebKit, I call this function. But this is also boring. I don't, I don't want to do this. I, I want to work on my project. I want to create the functionality I want. I don't care what browser it is. So jQuery is doing this for you. Uh, it works all these uh, underlying messy stuff that uh, you don't need to carry, uh, uh, care about it. And say I want to use jQuery for all of my projects. So what do I do? I copy jQuery's file to my project A. I copy jQuery to my project 2. I copy jQuery to my project 3. That's just waste of time, right? And Cokehead Co is another tool that you can use to manage your library. As you can see, that this is the framework is also a uh, library. You can manage your library. You can compress your JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript, since uh, as you can see, we are writing in plain text here. But in fact, in the uh, production environment, we compress these codes. We don't want to. Uh, what, what, what the comments, for example, these common lines, for example, I would say this is a common. These things has no no effects on your project that they simply tell uh, others who read or code what this line calls, uh, what this line is doing. So, in a production environment, you don't want to deliver these. Uh, you, you don't uh, and the function you can see that, uh, for example, the variable I can name a very long, and I said that. This is some element. So this is too long. It talks a lot of space if, if the whole project is big and we contain a lot of these uh, variables inside. So uh, before we publish our project, we usually compress our JavaScript to replace, uh, to remove these comments, to um, replace the long variable name with a shorter name. And these shops uh, are really, uh, you, you can use a lot of tools to do that. For example, Google Closure Library, uh, YUI, uh, Yahoo, uh, it's a lot of tools, but they're separate. Uh, I mean, um, I want to do it in one place. I, I just want to write my code and then the compressed version will automatically generate. And there is another, uh, the, the last feature I want to introduce about CodeKit is the uh, Auto release uh, with a below feature I just mentioned. So you write your code on your text editor, you save it, then on the other end the browser, it will automatically refresh. You can just watch uh, the, the result. Is, is it what you want? Or if you don't, uh, if something wrong, you'll go back to your editor, uh, modify your code, and then sort the result instantly on the browser. So let me demonstrate. Um, unfortunately, cooking is only for Mac and it's not free. <laughs> you will first drag your project into cooking and then it will ultimately find what fi uh, file is in your project. For example, this main.js, you can see that there are some options here. Uh, I want to concatenate the, all the libraries it use, and then minify it, or I can simply just concatenate, uh, concatenate the file. And also, there is a, another line here called main check JS. This file is automatically generated, uh, generated by CoKit. This is our main JS, and this is the main check. Take a look at it. It's much shorter. It contains no common, and you can see that this EL 
is renamed to E, but it's not really human readable because the format has all lost, the common is all lost. Uh, this, this, this kind of compressed JS is uh, only for production, so uh, but you, you don't read it anymore. And uh, about the library, for example, in this project I want to use a library called AngularJS. I can just I can demonstrate how I drop this project uh, library. Where is it? Library. Also very simple. You just drag the folder, then put it there. Oh yeah. Add a framework. And then I can choose my framework. That's what I'm going to do. this angular framework into our project. And there it is. Now it contains a lot of files. For example, this AngularJS is the only file we want to import into our uh, project. How do we do that? Let go back to uh, main.js2. Uh, the code is, is the same as main.js before I, I added it. So if you want to uh, import the library uh, AngularJS, you write, simply write this line called the code kit prepend. And then code kit, when scan this line, it would read all the contents of AngularJS and then prepend to your script, this part. So the generate file will look like this. Now these codes are in the AngularJS, is really long. So your JS is here, down there. And I can compress this file. How it, how it will look like. Just to process. Oops, is it no? No, is it? Oh, never mind. It, was, it will look like this. <laughs> Feature live reload. I'm going to the presentation. Now let me drag my index HTML into Chrome. instantly and if we have some style shields for example we're adding a main CSS and a reference to our HTML project now this is another template I uh, snip I add so that you could add CSS file to your HTML file really quick just one tap and say that we give it a class. Never mind. So that we want this paragraph to have a background color. Right? What color you want? Red, yellow, green? Okay, we can green. 